Cool. So <clears throat> I'm just going to get started um, right now. Just a bit of a housekeeping as well. Recording, recording and slides will be shared with you at the end of this webinar. We are working on getting the live uh, chat up. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, so we are going to start, um, we are going to share the slides and the webinar recording uh, with you. There'll be a Q&A session at the end. So this webinar is obviously brought to you guys uh, by Birdie and Channel 3 as well. Uh, I am Sim, I'm part of the Birdie team. Um, and my role here is obviously to facilitate this webinar, but also to share as well with you how Birdie can also um, understand it and give you a bit of very high level overview of um, of, of Birdie and, and, and how we can uh, support you with your ongoing operations. But also with me today, I have Dharmesh. Dharmesh, do you wanna give just a quick introduction? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Damesh Patel from Channel 3 Consulting. Um, more about what we do in the program a bit later. But uh, yeah, my I, I've been working on the digital social care record program for, uh, for coming up to a year now. So hoping to share some of the lessons learned and um, um, give some guidance on how we can move forward. Perfect. Um, I think without over, um, over uh, without any more delay as well, Dharmesh, I'm going to Hand it over to you as well. So if you want to start sharing your screen and take us through as well, understanding the DPS um, funding. Sure. Um, I'm going to share my screen, um, Sim. So if you wouldn't mind keeping an eye on the, the chat box or anybody who raises yeah, no questions and things, um, please to the audience, if you want to ask any questions while I'm talking, please just um, just shout if you can't raise your hand um, or, or if um, you've got a burning question that needs answering there and then. So I'm happy to take questions as we go along. Um, right, let me share my screen. Share and screen. That one, I think. We can see your screen. You can see my screen. Right, yeah. I'm going to now go into slideshow mode. So, so far, so good. Still see my screen? Oh, perfect. Brilliant. OK. Um, so yeah, so um, thank you to everyone for, uh, for for joining today. Thank you to Birdie colleagues as well for uh, for, for the opportunity to, to, to speak to you. As I said, um, my name is Dharmesh. I work for an organization called Channel 3 Consulting. We've been involved in the digitizing social care program um, since, it, since its inception. Um, I personally am currently working across two different regions on rolling out the programme, working with um, integrated care systems, integrated care boards, local authorities and so on. Um, we've also kind of finished up in a third area as well. So, so I'm hoping the content of the slides that I'm about to present will be useful for you. Uh, but if anybody needs ad additional information, I'm happy to pick that up as part of this presentation or outside, um, uh, outside of this webinar. So without further ado, um, we are Channel 3 Consulting. We're not a TV company that, that immediately springs to mind for most people. Um, we're actually a, a digital health and social care um, consulting business. We've been around since about 2009 um, and have kind of grown steadily over, uh, over, over the years. Um, we're, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're predominantly focused around digital transformation, so helping organisations from um, from anywhere on the spectrum, um, from kind of thinking about what you want, your vision and objectives and strategy around digital and how to kind of get off the ground and move forward and build your digital foundation, all the way through to kind of building business cases, all the way through to kind of system selection, supporting with system implementation, um, doing benefits work and, and, and kind of post implementation optimization work and things like that as well. So, so it's all about kind of working with organizations such as yourselves of differing sizes. We also work at kind of policy level with NHS England, with the digitizing social care team, with NHS transformation and so on. We can work across primary care, secondary care um, and community care as well. So, um, um, so, so hopefully um, that gives you a little bit of a flavor of what we what we do. Um, the Digital and Social Care Programme. So uh, you, you may well have kind of come across this information before, um, but, but if not, the, 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 the premise of the programme was driven um, from, from this white, white paper, People at the Heart of Care, that was released towards the end of 2021, um, where kind of a, the government had a light bulb moment and kind of 
finally realised that social care has been chronically underfunded in the whole digital space for, for, for years and years and years. Most of the funding, as, as, as I'm sure we'll all agree, tends to go towards kind of health care rather than social care. But, you know, the, the consequence of taking that approach is that we've now got a crisis on our hands. Um, so, so, so the government is trying to kind of correct that solution and is trying to pour more kind of investment into into social care and kind of bring it up up to parity to to, to healthcare and, and and the digital agenda around healthcare in general. Um, so um, there's a lot of still a lot there's a lot of work to be done uh, on that on that front. But um, you know, I think it was 150 million pounds has been kind of made available for the digitization of social care. Um, and that's not just digital social care records, that's across all sorts of digital tools. It's about kind of enabling digital maturity because, you know, there's there's a skills shortage, there's a, there's a resource shortage, um, there's a technology kind of gap as well because, you know, kind of, you know, digital solutions work, need to work in a very different way within social care as they would do in a healthcare space. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of work to do, but the government are definitely kind of throwing their weight behind it and they kicked off this digitizing social care program. Um, um, some of you that are kind of talking to your health care colleagues uh, across ICS areas and things will be aware that there are shared care records in place around the, around the country. So, so the the digital social care record is 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 a piece of that jigsaw that will ultimately kind of plug into a shared care record that is that is that is ultimately available to health and care staff that need access to it as well as patients and citizens um, within within regions um, so I'm, I'm assuming you're all spread out across across the country but um, in all of your areas uh, you, you will have what is known as a local shared care record and it will be called different things in Derbyshire for example it will be called the joined up care um, joined up care Derbyshire um, in, in Doncaster it will be called the integrated Doncaster care record and so on and so forth so so, so 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 the aim is to kind of bring the social care piece of the puzzle into the overall shared care record world to kind of help improve the quality of care and the, and the delivery of care um, um, and kind of accelerate accelerate that um, there is a there, there is work uh, uh, ongoing in terms of expanding the whole kind of availability of data as well and making sure that it's secure and then it kind of sits in a in a, in, a, in a safe space as well so all of these conversations are ongoing at the moment um we, we as i say we've been involved in the program from the center for coming up to a coming up to a year and one of the key things that we have been banging a drum about is that you know the technology is just the tool um but the tool, the technology is just an enabler for change, sort of thing. So you can you can take a new piece of technology or a solution, um, but if all you're going to do is 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 apply the same processes but in a digital world, chances are that it will fall flat pretty pr pretty quickly. So so what we've been encouraging the centre to do is to pay more attention to um, the cultural change that needs to take place, the transformation that needs to take place, the change in processes that need to take place. You know, technology has huge potential if it's used correctly uh, and if it's used appropriately and if the information is kind of, you know, if good information is put into it, good information will come out of it sort of thing. So, so we've been trying to kind of, trying to, keep the center focused on on the fact that this is a people enabled uh you know or a people kind of focused program not a technology program for the sake of technology um, uh, we've been working across uh different ics areas for the last for the last year as i say uh we've, we, you know i was, I was in, personally i was working uh, across the derbyshire program um, I'm currently working um, uh, across Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire and in Cornwall as well. So I, I think we've got a good level of experience um, on, on this programme and hopefully I can kind of kind of take you through some of the lessons that we've learned and some of the some of the kind of pitfalls to avoid and the approaches that you might take um, to 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 get to get to get onto this journey as well. Um, so the program objectives, the, the, the program objectives are quite simple, really. Um, by March next year, the, the objective is to have 80% of adult social care CQC registered providers adopted a digital social care record. 
um, um, and and sensor based falls prevention, which is another part of the program, um, reaching at least twenty percent. So so the highest risk um, um, residents or service users, uh, the highest risk of uh, of falls. Um, um, Year one of the programme, as many of you will know, uh, has now finished. It finished at the end of March. We're now into year two uh, of, of what is supposed to be a three year programme. Um, and there is a real push from the centre to meet that 80 or exceed that 80 percent, 80 percent target. So all your depending on which area you're in, all of the different areas have now been made aware of what their funding allocation is for year two. And so what you'll find is that the ICS is currently doing the number crunching at the moment about trying to work out, well, if we've got X amount of money and we've got, you know, X number of X number of provide care providers that we need to enable with the digital social record to get to that 80 percent mark, then how much can we actually kind of give to each of those providers? So all those calculations are kind of taking place at the moment because it's so early, uh, early, early in April and the information around the funding allocation has only just been made recently available. Everybody's kind of busy trying to work out what that actually means for their individual kind of regions and localities and things. So you will, as you start to plug into your local communities and start to find out more information about the DSER program or the wider digitizing social care program, um, you will start to receive more information about how much money is available for you, what you can use it for, and uh, uh, and how you actually go about accessing that funding, that, that funding pot that's available. Um, though it's interesting, just kind of mention you know where the CQC stand stand on this. Um, I think it's I think my reflection on that is that the CQC have gone from a position of being relatively neutral and ambivalent about kind of the impact of digital, not particularly that concerned about it. Um, they are now definitely kind of shifting towards um, being more positive about the impact of of, of digital. And so whilst it's not a mand it's it's not part of the audit requirements to have a digital social care record in place at the moment. I can see a world within the next couple of years where that where that will be part of the requirement. Uh, and certainly some of the feedback I get from CQC colleagues is that they definitely look more favorably on care providers that do have a digital social care record in place. Um, so it's kind of worth worth bearing that in mind. It's not a mandatory requirement, but but definitely those those providers that do have it will be looked upon more favorably um, over those that don't and those those that choose not to take it on as well. So worth 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 bearing that in mind. They're 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 maturing as an organisation as their understanding of the impact of digital increases as well. Um, and as and as I said earlier on, you know the, the the overall intention of this whole program is to kind of join up at a system level. So it's not just about kind of resolving requirements at individual care provider level um, or care commissioner level. It's about kind of joining up the system as a whole, so that actually actually um, health health providers, health commissioners, care providers, and care commissioners have a holistic view of the resident or the service user or the patient, depending on which environment and, and situation they're in. Um, because it's all about kind of joining up different strands of data that exists about an individual that exists in the health system or the care system, bringing all of that together so that people can make more intelligent decisions about what care is needed, what care has already been received, and, and how to best improve the quality of life and the delivery of service um, so that we move from a, a responsive treatment model to a pre preventative care. So, so we stop problems from occurring before they actually occur rather than rather than responding to them after they've occurred. Um, I'll take a quick pause there. Any 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 thoughts, any questions, any challenges from anyone? No, looks like I've stunned everyone into silence then. No, I think there there is um there is one question um regarding okay. that. I think we can um um uh, maybe answer it at the end, Darmesh. Okay, but, fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll come back to it. Great. Um. So, funding. So, depending on where you are in the country, um, your 
your eligibility for, for funding um, might be slightly different. There will be local rules that are applied in, lo in local areas. Essentially, what the government has done is that they've made a funding pot available to the different areas. They've allocated that money out, and then it's down to the individual in the individual ICS areas or the ICB areas um, to work out how to allocate that funding, how to attract, how to attract bids and so on and so forth. There is some element of commonality across all the different areas, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about in a, in a minute. But as a minimum, to be eligible, you have to be a CQ, CQC registered adult social care service provider. And you really have to have undertaken data security and protection toolkit training. Uh, and, and either achieved compliance or working towards achieving compliance. Um, all of your different areas, regardless of whereabouts you're in the, you are in the country, and there will be a program running called Better Security, Better Care. Um, and it will be run by, normally it's run by charities. So in Oxfordshire, it's run by the Oxfordshire Association of Care Providers. In West Midlands, it will be the West Midlands Care Association. In Cornwall, it will be the Cornwall adult social care um, consortium or something like that. They're called CASC. Um, so, so depending on where you are in the country, you'll need to plug into these different areas. And the contacts that I give you towards the end of this presentation or the, the signposting that I give you will help you will help you navigate to the appropriate point of contact that you need. Um, if you've already done the SPT, great, you're already on board. If you're working towards it, great then, then then you'll find you can still you'd be eligible for um for funding if you if you looked at it and decided we're a small provider it's not really worth our time to do it um then it becomes a bit more of a trickier trickier conversation i won't say categorically if you're not dspt compliant that means you can't access the funding there are there are always kind of gray areas in all of this and it'll come down to a conversation between yourself and the and, and the funding authority um, the funding itself is available for implementation of new solutions from the approved supplier list. So there is a, there is all of the suppliers, um, and forgive me if, if you know this already, but um, all of the suppliers, were, or, well, not all of the suppliers, let me take that back. Um, there are 13 DSCR suppliers who have been accredited um, and they've gone through a, a, a quite a stringent accreditation process by the government and, and the Digitising Social Care Programme team who have looked at their solutions and said, right, do these, are these solutions fit for purpose? Are they going to help us deliver our programme objectives? There's lots of providers out there, but 13 of them have been accredited. There's about another five that will be accredited in the next year, I would say. Um, and there are more in the pipeline coming coming through, but it's quite a strict process. So if you want to if you want to access the funding that's available, you have to you, um, you have to purchase one of the accredited uh, accredited solutions. Um, you can get funding for um, a new solution. So if you're currently working on paper, uh, for example, or if you've got some if you've got a system that is you know, really old and it's kind of falling apart, then you can you can apply for, for, for funding. If there are any providers on the call today that implemented a digital social care record after April last year, um, you can also claim retrospective funding as well. Again, there are always there are always kind of nuances and and, and kind of local variation in terms of how that rule is applied, but in general, um that 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 should should apply to, to to all areas the funding that's available is for core capability so it'll be like care management it'll be care planning and so on um it was it won't include um premium features so <coughs> a lot of the dscr suppliers um you know they, they 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 will have their core product and then they will have lots of add-on features whether it's enhanced reporting um, for example, or it might be rostering capability, or it might be MAR charts and things like that. A lot of the DSCR solutions that are on that accredited list um, won't offer it as a standard. Um, with Birdie, it's a different, it's a different, it's a different scenario. But for a lot of the other DSCR suppliers, you won't get the additional products included in the base, um, the base solution. 
um, but the funding will only cover your base solution. So you're more than welcome to go and purchase other features, but you'll have to self-fund that in the main. Um, the funding will also, also only cover the first year. So it will cover your software license costs. It will cover your implementation costs. It will cover devices if you need it. But when you are doing your application for funding, you will need to bear in mind two things. One is that the funding is only available for 12 months. So after the first year, you will have to self-finance. And secondly, um, there will be rules in place within each area about match funding. So if a solution is going to cost £2,000, for example, there will be an expectation that that £1,000 will come from the funding authority and the other £1,000 will have to come from you. Now, in a lot of areas, that can put off people for a lot of providers. It's just too much to, 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 to pay up front. Um, so you can, and depending on the area that you're situated in, um, cover your match funding by in-kind resources. So what I mean by that is that when you get a system, um, it's not just about putting the system in place, but you'll also have to get trained on the system. Um, there may be some data migration tasks to get up to speed on the system. Um, there will be internal costs that you as a provider will be incurring. And, and what 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 different areas will do is that they will they will work with you and help you work out what that internal cost actually is and if that internal cost is comes up to let's say a thousand pounds of resource cost then you can use that as your match funding contribution so you don't physically have to give any cash it can be in kind as well again Different areas will apply that rule in different in different in different ways using different parameters. But in the in the main, what I've seen is that in kind uh, match funding will be allowed. Um, as I say, it will cover your software license. It will cover your implementation costs for the first twelve months. If you've got poor Wi-Fi or if you've got a really poor network, then the funding won't cover that. There are different routes of funding that you could potentially access. Um, to sort out your networks and you know your, your your kind of your phones and things like that, um, but the, the 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 core funding from this program is for your is for is for your software primarily. Um, so in terms of uh, in terms of kind of next steps and applying for funding. Um, if you're not aware of it already, there is a there, there is a, a website called the, the Digital Social Care uh, website. It's part of the Adult Social Care Digital Transformation Fund. Uh, and when you get these slides, um, if you click on the link that's uh, that's underlined here, it will take you through to this page. And this page is kind of your starting point for getting more information about the whole program, about the different elements of digital. It's not just the digital social care record. It will be about falls tech as well. Um, but it will also, um, if I scroll, that you can see the, the kind of the tops of the three boxes at the bottom there. Um, it will also allow you to drill down into your local areas, find out a little bit more about what's happening in your local area, and it will give you a contact point as well, or an email address um, or a phone number. So you can then reach out to your local contacts and ask the question about what they're doing around digitizing social care and how you and what funding is available. There's two, there's two ways of accessing the funding. Um, there's a national, so, so, so there are, I, I don't know if we've got any enterprise care providers on the call today, um, but there are a number of big care providers out there. Uh, if I think of from a residential perspective, you know, it's things like your organizations like Barchester and HC1, for example. Um, they are organizations that have got hundreds of care provider locations spread out all around the country. Um, they, those big ones um, have been given access to uh, accessing the national, uh, the, the national pot of money um, to, to deliver their digital social care record program. So some of you on the call may have may have access to that. You may be aware of it. The other option is 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 the regional. So reaching out to your different areas, finding out what. Um, um, what the funding offer looks like, finding out what the parameters for accessing that funding looks like and, and the actual application process as well. So what I thought might be helpful in, in, in this table is 
that is just to give you a snapshot of the variation that actually exists around the country, or well, certainly did for, 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 for last year. And some of this will kind of carry forward uh, into, into this year, into this year as well. So, you know, it goes everything from in Dorset, for example, Dorset were offering care providers a thousand pounds. That's it. No more, no less a thousand pounds. You can do what you, you can, you know, you can do what you want with it within the, within the constraints of, you know, procuring a new system. Sussex, fifteen hundred pounds. Okay, and, and and you can see what I'm sh what I wanted to show you is that there's just a huge amount of variation, um, which which is not particularly helpful. But you know, it's 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 the nature of the beast. You know, the the centre kind of allocated the funding out, told local areas, right, you work out how you're going to get to the eighty percent mark, and, and this is how much money you're getting. You work out how best to use that money. So as a result, lots of lots of areas did lots of different calculations and worked out that you know they could only offer a thousand pounds or they would they would only offer 50 percent of the total uh and, and there would be no maximum um limit sort of thing so you know so depending on which part of the country you're in um you may be in an advant advantageous position compared to some of your so some of your peers in other areas as well so um, as I say, the year two funding allocation for all of these areas, plus all the ones that are not on this list, um, everybody's been made aware of how much money they're getting in this year two. They're all kind of busy trying to work out how far that money will stretch now. So, so, so some of these offers that you can see on the right hand side, they may well still be in place for year two, um, or you might find that actually some of it has been has been kind of revised downwards because there isn't as much money this year um, compared to compared to the first year. Um, so this is this is I just wanted to talk through kind of the typical funding application process. Now, as, as I say, every every area is will be slightly different. Um, but from the areas that I've been working in, um, this is typically the process. And then when I've been speaking to so speaking to other areas as well and other peers, um, this is generally kind of the approach to to that each area um, is 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 enabling to uh, for providers to access the funding. So there are there are a number of forms that will need to be filled in. I, ha I have to say, although this looks like quite a lengthy process, it's quite quick once you get started. The forms that are involved, the information that you will need to you will need to kind of uh, put into your application forms and things, it's not. It's, it's not too onerous, if, I, if, I, if I'm totally honest. And what you'll find is that a lot of the areas will help you through that process. So, you know, they, they will handhold you through that process to make sure that you get in the right information in at the right time um, to the right level of detail and so on. But, but typically it starts with, you know, your local area will say to you, right, fill in an expression of interest form. And that is your opportunity to register your interest in accessing funding. There's no commitment to that stage. It's literally just registering an interest. OK, the local teams will then kind of check your funding eligibility. Are you a CQC, are you CQC uh, accredited? Do you have DSPT? Are you working towards it? And so on. They will then kind of start to start to engage with you in terms of just helping you to understand what your actual requirements are um, from, from, from the digital social care record. Um, and you will, have, you will have access to resources to help you understand what your requirements are as well. Um, you'll then have the chance to review the approved suppliers. So you'll find lots of events going on around the country over the next kind of six, seven months um, where, where suppliers will be um, showcasing their solutions. Um, through webinars, through face-to-face -face events and things like that. You can get involved with all of that. You can also ask individual um, suppliers of DSCRs to, um, to, to give you a one-to-one -one demonstration and things like that as well. So it's your opportunity to look at what's available in the market and work out which is the best solution for yourselves. Um, you make a decision on a, on a supplier that you like the look of and you'll, and you, and you'll ask that supplier for a 12-month quote. Uh, and using that quote, you would then fill in a grant application form. Again, the the, the, the local teams will support you through this. Um, you'll they'll that, that grant application form will be reviewed, it will be approved, and so on. Um, and then you'll be asked to, to ask to um, sign a memorandum of understanding. And once you've once that memorandum of understanding has been signed by all parties, 
um, you will then be given kind of the green light to go and procure that system that you like the look of. Um, and then you'll start your implementation planning. There is, you know, I, I, there isn't an expectation that you have to implement a solution straight away um, or you have to spend the money that you've been allocated, um, you know, within six months. Um, it's all up for discussion uh, in terms of what works best for you, because there will be other operational priorities as well going on at the same time. Uh, but you start the implementation process. You then um, you then start incurring expenditure that those invoices that you're that you're receiving. You then send that back into your local teams and the local teams will reimburse you. That's typically how it works. There are some areas that I know whereby once you've signed the memorandum of understanding, they will arrange for payment to given to be given directly to you because you know two thousand pounds for a solution um, is more than what what you know a lot of smaller providers will have as daily cash flow sort of thing. So so local teams will recognise that. So in those scenarios, they will give you the cash up front to go and spend it on the solution of your choice. Um, as I say, this is the this is the your main resource to start to start understanding what the whole program looks like, what are the different elements to it, the different uh, the, the different kind of types of work streams that are ongoing, uh, where you can get access to um, additional information as well. Um, and last but not least, um, you'll, you'll get this in your slide pack as well. These are just links to differing differing resources that may will help you in, um, in helping to kind of make a decision about your next step, whether it's about buying a di digital social care record, whether it's about understanding who's on that accredited supplier list, um, whether it's about building your digital foundations and addressing skills gaps and things like that. Hopefully these, are, th these resources will all be of use to you. Lovely, right, so at that point, um, I'm now going to stop sharing stop sharing and send you. thank you so much Armesh. this is so insightful again we have a few questions as well but at the end of the webinar we'll go through it so keep asking your questions even if you remember after as well Darmesh will be on this last q a session as well but thank you so much it's so insightful and it is a bit of a labyrinth isn't it Darmesh? in terms uh, of trying to understand what's happening right now yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of conversations going on. Um, there are webinars that the centre are hosting. In fact, there's one on the 18th to talk more about this whole program and what year two looks like. So, um, might be that might you know be an opportunity for you to link into your local teams as soon as possible to get an invite onto that webinar for more information. A hundred percent. Cool. Thank you so much. And now it's my. Turn. So I just want to give you a quick review so you can understand a couple of, of different things. For those of you who don't know, obviously I'm Sim, I work here at Birdie, and my role here is to help obviously kind of deconstruct information, make sure we provide value for the social care sector, more specifically to the home care. So what is Birdie? Um, Birdie is a technology partner for the home care industry. Our role here is to support the home care industry so people, um, you know, so that uh, are the care that we provide that we work so hard to deliver is being done safely and efficiently at the um, at at the point of care, which is in this case their their um, um, their home as well. Um, again, like I said, Birdie is a technology partner as well, alongside with you to be able to deliver outstanding care. So. A bit, a bit more about the move to digital as well, to set the context. So this is not something new. The funding is just part of the wider push for everyone to kind of try to digitalize social care. So I'm not sure if you guys know, but 150 million in total uh, investment in digital and social care by the NHS. So you have that pool of money for the digital um, social care records, but there's a wider move as well. By 2024, the CQC aims to have these 80% of social care uh, agencies um, with a digital care record. So there's been money and there's been clear guidance by the main one of the main regulators in, in, in England as well on this. But what's actually is the same thing. So at Birdie, we made this study where we tried to understand the typical uh, home care costs for a business. We estimated on average, you spend around 5.5k 5, 5 per care recipient 
per, per year if you use paper based on your operations. So the move to digital is not only like this mandated by the NHS or the Department of Health and Social Care as well. This is because it provides a more lean way for you to operate. And by lean, I mean reducing your over, um, overall costs. We estimate that um, if you move to Birdie, obviously, an, an average business of around 100k recipients, you might be able to save 1.8k per k recipient per year. But where is this savings come from? So if you think about it, uh, we ma made here like a bit of a breakdown. 563 pounds worth of going paperless. 900 pounds of optimized schedules. You mean reducing the time they take to build rotors and runs? I mean, it could be like uh, reducing the, the time, the travel time and the wait times of your carers. If your carers are not delivering care, you cannot charge for said care as well around 300 pounds about um, uh, retaining and managing staff, 26 pounds in quality and compliance, and 60 pounds saving in the finance process. So it is imperative if you wanna maintain a successful business as you go as well, and to focus on what you really should be focusing is, is delivering outstanding care. This is why the move to digital, it's so important. So um, a key element of, of this as well is the, uh, typical spend on carers travel time, um, it's around 1.7k per care recipient per year. And if you move to digital and you can oversee and create your road as super efficiently on this, and I can show you a bit more what do I mean by this, it's around £904 per care recipient per year. Um, if you if you think about it as well, this investment that you do, is, it's also for your carers as well on the ground. So um, having this kind of intuitive way for them to just focus in less on the paperwork and more on the delivery of this care with easy ways to um, to kind of do all this admin behind it via this digital um, app. This is key again for this um, for these for you to attain these savings. So let's capture this moment together. Um, so let's let's kind of go and see Birdie in action as well. So you can see kind of firsthand experience to see how this can save you time, how this can save you um, money in, in your operations as well. But before I show you the app, um, I, I'm afraid I won't be able to show you every single thing. Like I said, it's just going to be like a quick overview and then you'll jump over to the Q&A questions if you, have, um, if you have more of them. But essentially we have the agency hub. This is how we describe almost like the... Um, command control system where your care coordinators, care managers, as well, your office staff will be mostly uh, all of the time. We have the care app. So care app is the app that the carers will take on each of the visits uh, uh, as well. We have the family app. So this is the, fam the app that allows um, loved ones and family members to access the information, know um, uh, when the visits were done, for how long, um, et cetera. And then you have Birdie Analytics, which I consider this is the biggest uh, kind of upside as well of moving to digital. If you have all of this data, if you have all of this structured data, because it's all in digital, it's not on paper, it's not distributed across five, six uh, pieces of software that you use, you're able to understand and have a clear vision of how your business is performing on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'll show you a bit more on this. So first things first, let me just share my um, second tab. And let's start with just very high level of the Birdie app. So this is the home screen. This is where you would uh, come over. Um, you go into, into the log. But before I jump into this, I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of kind of uh, what I believe are um, um, interesting sides of, of, of the Birdie app. So let's start with the clients. Um, my favorite client is actually Petra. Um, this is, imagine when you're creating the client for the first time, you have all of this about me uh, section. What is the about me? Think of it as your gateway to personalized care. We know how, um, uh, how the CQC is pushing more and more for, for you to demonstrate that you do um, personalized care. And it always starts to fully understand your um, your clients um, uh, wants, needs, and obviously as well outcomes. So you have the usual stuff, profile, the contact details, highlights as well, if you need to add as well. 
I think here what is important as well on the personal identity as well, this has been a big, big push um, as well by the CQC and the NHS. Here you can add the life story because you know how important that is and any preferences as well. Then you go into clinical details. So if you have medical history, medical support, doctor and GP kind of contact details, key contacts as well on this, but you also have here the future planning, um, et cetera. So we know how um, there's a lot of conversations around the decision-making capacity, um, uh, you know, the the DNACPR the, the uh, protocols as well. What is it? So all of this can be logged in here to ensure that you know it at any given time. So without going into um, this more kind of, um, uh, into the detail a bit yet. I'll show you the care app later, but you also have um, you the care plan. So you do your initial assessments. Petra here has all of these assessments done. Um, if I just click on this one, for an example, you always have a log of this. So when you reviewing these assessments, we know that this is an ongoing push for you to always keep on track as well. So you know straight away. And if you wanna kind of just review the assessments, you just need to kind of review like what has been pre-selected before. So then you can change. So you don't need to build them from scratch. Here's another time, time saving as well. So alongside all of this kind of um, um, each assessment, you can also will have obviously the tasks. And here you can have all the tasks they, they've done. We've done this alongside, for example, the British Geriatric Society. So mo most of the tasks should be here. We're always keen as well to, if you have any more tasks that you think it should be here, you can always ask us to, to add them on and our team will review them, make sure um, it's, all, it's all there. And then you all obviously have the, the risks here and you can add risks as you're doing your assessments as well. So if you're going back to capture product plan, you have the initial assessments and it's fine, but you also have loads of other additional assessments. Right, so you have here behavioral seizures, environment fires as well. Alongside that, you can also have all the documents and signed documents as well. So any other documents that you have as part of your own process, you can uh, always add them and upload them. And then obviously each task planner as well. As you can see here, the tasks can be a multitude of them. Uh, uh, you can you can set the frequency. And for me, I think one of the key ones is is the essential. So if it's an essential, every time that the carer goes into this house, so we know that medication is an essential task, but even the other tasks, they need to outline an outcome. So when I when the carer says, I've done this, they need to say, was it done? Was it, um, it wasn't done as well. This is a way for you, obviously, to make sure that you are um, uh, kind of following the, the process and the, the care quality that you want to deliver as well. And then great, and then you have the visits. If you create the visits, here you have a bit of the visit log. I'll go into more detail later. Another key element is the medication. So when you go into the view schedule medication, you have here a bit of an overview of all the Petra's uh, medication as well. But I think what is kind of an, a key one here is the MAR chart. So very, very quickly, you have a view of um, have, have the medication been um, administered? Yes, no. Um, and here you have basically a, a, your gateway to quickly audit your uh, medications. Uh, NT stands for not taken. Uh, there's no record uh, of this one, but here you see it's fully taken as well. And here you have the log as to when it was done. It was my colleague Lola that administered the, the medication. And I think that is such an easy way for you to, to, to kind of monitor your whole medication as well. Um, again, if this, this, the medication uh, system at Birdie is connected to the NHS medicines database, and this means that there's not going to be any mismatch between, uh, what the doctor prescribes or what the pharmacy um, um, gave to you and what you, what you have here. So for example, if you put paracetamol, you have here all the ways that you can have paracetamol. Once you click on it, you can add all the necessary information. If it's prompt, assist or administer, it can be assist. If it's schedule a PRN or blister pack, uh, you can choose the quantity, range or other. Uh, it can be uh, the administration room. You can do the frequency. 
how many times you want to do preferred time. Um, you can put just lunch and then, um, okay, because there's four slots. So you can add this, all of this fairly quickly. So, so the start time, let's put here in the morning. And if we don't put the last dose, it means I, I believe it's, for, it's forever, essentially. Um, so once you've done all this as well, now you need to obviously understand your roster as well. Um, so let's see here, this is the rostering window as well. You have a care view, but you also have a client view. So if you go into the client view, and if you, for example, just search Petra, here she is, we can see Petra's roster here. So what's happening? This morning, the visit was completed. This, I believe, is a visit that's still in progress. It means that the person hasn't yet checked out. But here you have, and imagine that Lola, the care that's allocated to deliver this visit, it can no longer um, go. So you can put find alternative care. And this is kind of a, a quick win on rostering. You have the care continuity. Obviously, Lola is the person that usually is the main care for, for this person. That's why you can see 100% of continuity, which means all of the visits have been done by a Lola as well. We also have travel time, and you also have groups, right? So this is the key one, and you can put allocate care, and it will help you massively in saving time to find the, the, the right care as well. Um, then you also have the, the inbox. The inbox is how you see like your command and control for anything so, so, uh, like the alerts that are, that are raised uh, on your day-to-day. -day. So a good part of a care coordinator's job is fighting fires. So the idea would be you go into um, each of them and you can understand and you can then have a quick kind of view of the uh, what you need to do. So let's go action needed. Um, Great severity, we analyze its medium uh, and then just say we're now in progress, saved. And now you have here the timeline. Why is the timeline important? And this is why digital social care workers are so important. Is this log, is this evidence? What did you do? At what time? How quick were you to respond to accidents and incidents as well? All of this will be here as well. You can set up all of these, all of these things um, as well together. Um, we, we don't have a lot of time left, so I'll try to be, uh, I won't go into too much of the finance side um, as well, but um, but I think what would be important as well is to um, it may, maybe just show you guys a bit of the, um, 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 a bit of the app as well. And I'll try to be super quick, but I think it's so important. Can you see how quickly it's, it's, it's gonna be as well? So I'm gonna just quickly stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna just share my iPhone. Okay, so here's me as a carer. This is my profile, but if you would log in, you would see here. You can leave all of these messages as well. So if you have global messages that you want to send to your carers, that would be the um, the way to put it in. Obviously, I don't have any visits to, today because I'm, this is just kind of a demo a, account of it. But the cool thing here, you can also do, imagine that now I had to go as a carer to a visit while we're still sorting out the rosters and everything, but another carer called sick and now I need to do a visit. So the only thing to do is ensure that the, the care is being delivered as well. So very quickly, if I'm told, oh, now you need to visit Petra, I can just go here and search for Petra as the client. It's here and you can start this unscheduled visit as well. So if you go as well, when you start the unscheduled uh, visit, you go here, start a scheduled visit and then you can check in, let's see. Uh, two, two, two. Okay, I'm going to put check in on visit. You see this trigger force here. It means that obviously Petra is based in Bath. I'm based in London. And it's giving me this warning to say, are you sure you want to check in? So this is an, another way for us to do um, call monitoring as well. This is due to GPS location on your phone, but you can also use QR codes as well. And if I put yes, continue, there will going to be a, a, an alert as well in our system. They force check in. They try to do the the check in while they were so far away from the house. You might want to to check that, and then it's super easy. You have here all your tasks divided by obviously the periods as well. There's two tasks for lunch, which is assist with shopping, assist to Petra have a bath. You finish the task. Petra has 18 medications today, so she didn't take 
it um, on this one. That's because my colleague uh, logged it um, as well. But here you can have, you can also see the PNR, and then you can see all the information that we inputted, apply after taking a bath. And here you have the body map as well. So I'm going to press record those. Um, and I'm going to say um, partially taken. And it gives you this, this kind of list of like, the, what was the outcome and why wasn't it fully taken? I can just say that Petra refused it. She wasn't feeling great and refused. Oh, we fused. Done. Add notes, you add the notes, it's done. So if we go back and we try to check out right now, are you sure you want to check out? You press yes. You're going to check out as well very far away from it. So it'll be a trigger and you can say yes, continue. And then you put submit report and it's done. Because it was an, um, obviously, um, this is just a brief overview. My colleagues obviously will be more than happy to take on a full view of, of, of the platform um, as well. So you can have a look. Now, let's jump to a Q&A session. Thank you so much for all of you that's, that stayed here. I'm going to read out, is that okay, Darmesh, a couple of questions that people had? Sure. Yeah. Cool. So the first one from Caroline. Is there a target for home care regarding sensor-based equipment or is just for care homes, basically the sensor-based uh, fall prevention? Yeah, uh, um, last year it was very much focused on residential care. Um, this year with the new guidance, um, I believe it is open to all, but that's unconfirmed at the moment. We're still kind of going through the guidance to make it, to, to kind of truly understand it. But um, um, the whole kind of approach to sensor-based falls tech generally is changing this year. So it will be, whereas whereas last year it was very much focused on digital social care records and sensor-based fall detection and prevention technology. This year it will be continuing digital social care records and then focusing on what they're calling um, adult social care, digital transformation fund or something like mm -hmm. that. But basically it's meant to be an all encompassing thing. So it's not just going to include sensor-based falls. It will also include um, some of the things like um, rostering capabilities and th things that you need to enable clinical efficiency, if you like. And it will also include innovative technology. And, and, and my understanding is that um, that will be open to all care providers, not just residential. Super, thank you so much. Aish Polo had two questions. First one, what, what does DSPT compliant mean? And how can we purchase one of the accredited solutions? Uh, sure, so D DSPT stands for Data Security and Protection Toolkit. It's, um, um, it's, 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 a, it's a process that you go through um, with, with, with an accredited um, provider um, to, to uh, it's all about kind of creating data security. So it would all be, you know, at the moment you may be using, we have a lot of providers that use their own personal email accounts to conduct their, you know, to do their, to, to, to run their businesses and things like that. So it's all about kind of creating um, um, kind of a secure environment for the, for, for, for the work that you deliver. So, um, there is a process to go through and an, accred an accreditation process that your local areas will be able to kind of guide you guide you on um, and ultimately it might it will end up meaning that you'll have a secure email address which might be an nhs.net address or it might be something something else but it kind of conforms to industry security standards uh, especially you know because more more and more of the kind of the transactions that take place digitally involve the sharing of personal uh, identifiable data um, so it's all about kind of creating, helping you to have work in an environment where the sharing of that information can be done securely and safely. Um, Thank you so much. The other question was about accessing the yes um, the funding. Yeah, so that that will be in the slides. The um, there are links in the slides that will take you through to the digital social care website. Um, from the digital social care website, you need to find your local area, depending on which part of the country that you're based in. You'll have an email address or a phone number within each of those local areas, and you just need to send an email uh, um, to that to that address, um, requesting information about the digitizing social care program fund. Perfect. And I think um, 
just just as a bit of a maybe a a recap of your slides and what you said. So the main website, and this will be on the slides, but um, I'll I'll put here. The main slide is this slide, and this is the list of the accredited suppliers there are um, as well. So you, again, like I said, regarding, for example, the, the certification on around data security and data privacy, you need to have that as one of the requirements to adopt these, correct, yeah. Ramesh? Yeah. You can access these training frameworks and understand a bit more. This is the same website. You go, you go there and you and you and you um you know go through all the stages that are there, but that is needed to, to do. Yeah. Then so, only get funding with this with that. And yeah. if you pick a supplier from that list that's approved. So just, just to add to Sim, in, in terms of the accredited supplier list, there's 13, there's 13 suppliers on there. Birdie is one of them as as well. Um now, in, in, in my position, I'm not allowed to recommend one supplier over another. However, however, there is only one supplier on that list that is purely focused on domiciliary care, um, and that's Birdie. Uh, the, the others you'll find are mostly residential focused. There are some big suppliers out there, such as Nourish, for example, um, who have a domiciliary care offering of some sort, um, but I expect I, I think you'll reach a conclusion that it won't be as robust and as as comprehensive as what you will get from the birdie solution. So that's not me recommending birdie. It's just kind of helping helping those of you that are interested in having a look at the suppliers try and work out which is the most appropriate for you. There is a tool on the digital social care website when you go through the pages that will allow you to kind of um, do a bit of a go through a checklist. Um, that will go through a checklist and that will say right we need uh, x y z types of capability and um that will allow you to filter the number of um the number of suppliers that are on the list that met that will meet your specific needs so it's worth having a look at that having a look at that tool cool thank you Ramesh. um how can we uh i think we answered this so are companies that use their own digital social care records, uh, and if yes, are they able to? Is uh, if they? I think the question is, if they're using their own digital social care records, uh, are they able to integrate with the suppliers? Okay, sorry to clarify. There's another double question on this. I mean, do they need to integrate with the local shared records? Um, it's not a mandatory requirement, but I expect that that. Uh, requirement will be it will be you know it will it will it will become more of a mandatory requirement in the next in the next 12 to 18 months i suspect so i think all of the all of the dser suppliers on the list um have been accredited because they do link into shared care records so it doesn't matter who you go with on the list um, they will plug into your local shared care record if you're using one of the solutions that's not on the list um then um there the, there will be a conversation further down the road between that supplier and the um uh, and the center about creating that capability perfect thank you so much Damesh. so can the funding um this is a great question by lorraine as well can the funding be applied for one branch first or does it have to be company wide no you can you can you can stage you can stage your, um, your 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 rollout when it comes in terms of accessing your question from in terms of answering your question from a technical perspective. When you're applying for funding, you would apply for your entire um, your, your entire estate, but you would then have the flexibility to roll out site by site by site. Um, so if you the, the the risk with only kind of applying for funding for one site at a time is that um, the funding rules might change in the intervening period. So the funding approval and the and the, the 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 money that you get for one site might be different to what you get in six months' time for another site because you know because the funding parameters have changed, which they could do. Perfect. Thank you so much, Damesh. Any last questions, anyone? Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick wrap up. Recording and the slides will be sent to you uh, as well. 
Um, the idea behind this is for you to understand the funding pathway. So how can you do it? It's extremely fragmented. It is a labyrinth. There's nationwide, obviously, um, uh, programs um, around or guidelines as well to access the funding. You need to do that privacy. The, you need to pick up um, the privacy and security kind of certification. You need to make sure you pick a supplier that's on the list. But then each individual local authority will need to navigate. You will need to navigate on their own unless you provide care at a national level. And that way you can interact directly with the um, with a national team as well. We've heard as well from agencies that they can coordinate this obviously from their local authorities as well. And again, it's important to understand why you do this. This is, I know it's usually one year funding or the funding you feel like it's partial and then I need to pick up the bill after it. You need to really assess the benefits of digital. You need to understand as well how your processes can can be changed and can be kind of integrated uh, back into what you do day to day. Um, people like Channel 3, and that's what they uh, are, are very much so much more kind of capable of advising you and supporting on this state change to digital. And you also obviously have, um, um, obviously the software provider that you pick should also be able to support you in this journey with onboarding, customer support, et cetera. I think here, oh, do we have two more questions? Uh, I think it's just Sophie saying, uh, Sophie, it's, I think it's much better if you, uh, we'll send you the recording uh, later on uh, as well. Um, and you can, you can review it um, as well. I think that's, that is best. Well, thank you so, so much. Um, okay. Uh, I think that, that Ashi full follow just asked, my question is if they already have a solution in, in place, what is the procedure to get the funding? Yep. So if you if you've had the solution in place from an accredited supplier since April 2022, you are eligible to um, claim for retrospective funding. So you'll have to reach out to your local area. Um, so when you get the slides, that will signpost you to your local area, and um, and you'll be able to reach out to the contacts there to find out the the process for. Um, applying for funding support. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ramesh. Thank you for your time and thank you everyone for their time today. Uh, the recordings and slides will be sent to you uh, probably tomorrow. And uh, thank you so much for joining. I'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. Cheers.